everyone. Vic here with Intentional Mentoring with Mr. Peter Wolfing. Today, we're going to be talking about what if King Arthur was an affiliate marketer? I just came up with that idea because you gave a talk today about King Arthur. Let me uh, clip on my microphone here. Um, sorry about that. So how you doing, Peter? You I'm doing excited? fantastic, but I'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So tell us a little bit about what uh, people can expect from tonight uh, with respect to uh, your King Arthur story. Now, this is uh, earlier today. You gave a live talk at the Breakthrough Challenge. Links below in the description if you'd like to still participate in this with our friend, Dr. Stan Harris, who was on yesterday. And uh, tell us a little bit about what people can expect, because we're going to run the replay here in a few minutes. It's literally in the rendering machine right now, so it's going to be coming out uh, in a moment. So uh, take it away, Peter. Yeah, guys, you know, I spoke today about loving yourself first, okay? Loving yourself first, because you have to be able to cut yourself a break. We all have these quirks and we have these things that we, you know, beat ourselves up with. And um, I wasn't born smart enough. I wasn't born good looking enough. I wasn't born with this or I didn't have that or things are always happening to me. And, um, you know, all these different things that um, we, we kill ourselves over when really we have to learn to be able to cut ourselves a break and in effect, what I call in um, this presentation to kiss our most ugly self. Okay. And you'll see that in the story. It's a story about King Arthur and his knights and specifically Sir Gawain. And I won't ruin the story, but um, it's a kind of a, a great uh, PowerPoint slide presentation, mainly pictures, but you'll hear me speaking about the story. And I want you to lose, I want you to lose yourself in the story. And then when I'm done with the story, I'm going to go over the story and what these different parts of the story really mean, okay, and how they really mean to our lives today as an entrepreneur and to human beings. So if you put yourself in the context of what if Sir Gawain, which is his most trusted knight for King Arthur, what if King Arthur and what if the round table and what if Sir uh, Gawain were affiliate marketers, <laughs> right? Think about that. What if they were affiliate marketers? And so how would this lesson benefit you? Now, I know cutting yourself a break and loving yourself first sounds like some airy fairy type of thing. And it's, yeah, just tell me how to build a funnel. Yeah. Just tell me how to make a sale. You know, that type of thing to go right for the top when you haven't built a great foundation yet. Okay. And this foundation has to be built because what's going to happen is if you have any kind of success, you're going to sabotage yourself because you don't love yourself first. Because you're going to go in and you're going to dig yourself. Like uh, I had success eventually <laughs> with making money, but then I had worthiness issues. I don't deserve to make that kind of money. And I would sabotage myself. And then the money would come down, down, down. And I had to start all over, down, down, down. And I always do that. I had no idea I was doing this because it's all subconscious. Until I was able to awaken myself and have an awareness that I was even doing this stuff. You cannot fix these types of things unless you're aware they're even happening to yourself. And they're so simple. They're so subtle. And they're so insidious that they could derail you and you won't even know that you're doing it to yourself and you flow through life and you sleepwalk through life and you wonder what happened and you have lots of regret issues so one of the things that we try to do in our mentor classes that we do especially on mondays is to unravel the squirrels that are running around in your brain and in, in, in your conscious and your subconscious and make you think. I want to make you think. I want to make you question everything. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Okay. We just spoke on Monday 
about a subject called You Are Perfect. And I mentioned a specific technique. You'll have to listen to it. I'm going to go into it here. But um, we spoke about being able to be aware of everything you're doing and as simple as tying your shoe, putting your pants on, which leg goes in first, how do you feed yourself? And these simple things make you aware of what you're being aware of, paying attention to what you're paying attention to. And you start to think, why did I do it that way? Why did I do it specifically that way? And when you go back, 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 and we go what they call back it up, back it up, back it up, <laughs> right? Um, then you start to say, well, I was taught that. You know, my parents taught me to do that. Or I was taught by authority figures to do that. Or society taught me to do that. Or the news taught me to do that. And I just took it as gospel. And maybe it worked for me then. And maybe it worked for me in high school. But it doesn't service me now. So these questions are vital to where you are now as a human being and an entrepreneur. These questions can unravel the stuff that are holding you back so that this way you can move forward and grow. That's what life is all about. It's about growth. It's not about spiking the ball after high school, right? It's about growth. And the way you can accelerate that, accelerate that growth is by asking questions, valid questions. And then if this is you and your, your cup is full, and you're asking questions, you say, okay, I want to keep that. I want to get rid of that. I want to keep that. I want to get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. I want to keep that, right? Whatever they happen to be, beliefs, um, attitudes, um, anything about life, about physical things, whatever, right? I'm not here to judge for you. You judge for yourself. And if your cup is full, after you do that, you'll find that the cup is not full anymore. Then you could start putting in other stuff and replace the stuff you got rid of. Because the stuff you were ingrained when you're 5 and 6 and 10 and 15 and 20 years old are probably not servicing you now as 30 and 40 and 15 and 60 and 70 year olds. Okay? The, the beliefs about money, the beliefs about your ability, the beliefs about relationships, the beliefs about whatever, fill in the blank, are probably not servicing you. So you have to say, listen, is the way I'm thinking about money right now, is that really servicing me? No, got to go. And replace it with something that you feel is going to elevate you financially. And we give you suggestions and ideas and so on on Monday nights. And you decide, hey, okay, I like it or I don't. And then you kind of rebuild your your um, your rocket ship. So tonight is a fairy tale, a mythical fairy tale about loving yourself. And I think you're going to really like it. It's about, uh, I'm going to say about 30 minutes or so. Um, not terribly long, but listen to the, the first part is me telling the story. And the second part is me going back into the story and what each one of these um, elements mean. It's almost like the sixth sense. Have you ever seen that movie? And um, at the end of the movie, it goes like, oh, the red doorknob. Now I, oh, she's wearing a red dress. That's what happened. And so I'm going to go back into the story, and then I'm going to say, well, this is what this means, and this is what this means, and this is what this means, <laughs> okay? And um, I actually cut it short. It's a, there's a longer teaching that, that I do with this, but I had to cut it short because we are limited on time this afternoon. But I think you're really going to like it. So, so Vic, if you're ready, is it ready to be queued up and gone? Oh, you're muted, buddy. Vic, you're muted. Uh, there yeah, you go. yeah, yeah. We okay. have about 30 seconds on the clock, and I just want to oh, okay. acknowledge uh, Elsa Mendez. Bonsoir, cher monsieur. Peter Wolfing, j'espère que vous allez bien prenez soin de vous. Well, you did. You Elsa said it better said, than me. Yeah, I'll, I'll translate it. But, you know, <laughs> in French, it's just better. Vous yes, êtes it is. 
de bien que Dieu vous bénisse. Uh, French is like butter. <laughs> yeah. French is like talking with butter. Yeah, it's, it, like it's like yeah. silk. It's like silk. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we do these things. It's because, you know, we want to serve our global community. Now yeah. think about that. Um, I'm going to acknowledge it. See, we have a few viewers. Okay. So when we first started the broadcast, she was actually in my channel called Tube Relevance. Mm -hmm. And now we just had three people jump in on uh, intentional mentoring. And we did this with no emails, with no reminders, with no notice of any kind. And we started just clicking a button and sharing from our hearts. And see, that's what I believe the power of the internet was supposed to be. Okay. But there's only one way you can do that. You know what that one way is? It's a very simple word. Take a guess, Peter. You know what it is, actually, though. Okay, I'm sorry. I was putting it on the, ch the channel. I'm sorry. I didn't hear the question. Yeah. What was it? Yeah, one, one word. One word that people must understand about this, okay? And this is a secret in YouTube mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't get, okay? Mm -hmm. Called notifications. Notifications, yeah. okay? You got to get the all button. Yeah. See, I watched a video from um, a fellow YouTuber. Like, I'm now in the YouTube culture. Like, once you have reached, you know, your first million views, then you're part of the tribe. You're part of the club, and you can actually hang out with other people who are part of the club. I never thought about YouTube as really doing anything. I mean, truth be told... I uploaded some videos nine years ago and did nothing like most people. One of them went viral. Okay. I got lucky, um, but I persisted and persisted. And now I have more than 600 videos on my channel. Well, basically there is a statistic that shows that people who have a thousand subscribers on average, have uploaded this many videos. Like, uh, I think it was like a, somewhere on the neighbor of 150, okay? So if you want a thousand subscribers, you have to get ready to upload 150 videos. Well, how do you produce 150 videos? Well, the easiest way is live streams, yep. like this one, okay? Mm -hmm. You're on camera, you're live, you're doing it under, whatever condition you're in and it gets better over time the more you do anything the better you're going to get at it okay looking right at the camera connecting with your audience that's what people want to feel they want to feel the authenticity like we started off peter and i three years ago doing weekly zooms now we're doing multiple stream yards per week the nice mm -hmm. thing about the stream yard is that we can speak for about an hour or two hours like yesterday we were on for three and a half hours but it was like a show okay we have so much material that we've gathered over the years mm -hmm. that we could easily fill a three or four hour time slot simply by replaying clips of some of our best stuff that we've taught that's evergreen so one of the secrets of youtube is really making evergreen content in other words what that means is make something that people will want to watch over time. And uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight is one of those things. And uh, it's <laughs> we just came up with this idea. What if King Arthur was an affiliate marketer? And uh, because of your talk uh, that now is ready to go mm -hmm. live, and now we just have more people showing up. And, and, so, I've, you know, and we figured that, you know, King Arthur needs Merlin. <laughs> yes. well, you're, everybody needs a merlin <laughs> yeah well that, that's my role like it or not, I, i've i've tried to be the guy that you know the here's the thing if you play the king of the hill someone's always trying to knock you off the hill right mm -hmm. but if you're at the guy at the bottom of the hill helping all the people who got knocked off the hill <laughs> you're gonna have a job for life <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I, I, I love that role. And uh, it's really funny because you're going to see coming at least to my channel, I've gotten back into, into 
my childhood roots in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And, I, and, and, you know, King Arthur, he never fought a dragon, although he should have. Did he ever fight a dragon? I don't think he ever fought a dragon in the lore. Yeah, I don't know. But, you know. He would always send the other knights stuff. to do that stuff. He would send the pawns to go out and do that stuff. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but if you watch the show Arthur, have you seen uh, um, Have you seen Arthur? It's the BBC show. I, I haven't. I heard it's really good. I think you'd it's like it. It's fantastic. I yeah. almost want to watch it again. It's about uh, how he meets Merlin. And Merlin is the guy that's actually interacting with the dragon. And King Arthur's father actually wants to kill the dragon. Mm -hmm. But the dragon is there to help him through the challenges. And it's all about magic. And so what they did is they banned magic in all the kingdoms of King Arthur. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is Merlin has to practice his magic secretly under penalty of death. Okay, and so there's multiple times where where King Arthur is about to die and he's got to like, you know, hide behind a tree and kind of cast a spell or something like that. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, he goes into it. So let's roll this. And then okay. after this is done, I've actually prepared a PowerPoint. Uh, this is a PowerPoint I gave. I've given this PowerPoint about five times. And this is the, the 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 fifth revision. I know that because every time I do the PowerPoint, I put a letter, A, B, C, D, E, F, right? So this is the fifth iteration of that PowerPoint. It's going to be talking about real affiliate marketing and about an emerging business model that I've discovered runs, um, how could I put it? You make more money with this model than the model that people believe to be true, okay? So there is a model that's become dominant largely because of funnel builders, click funnels, the personal growth industry, the leadership industry. And we've tested that model. We've tried that model, but we actually make more money and we serve customers better with this other model. And I'm going to talk about that other model tonight. And a uh, big shout out and thanks to Dr. Stan Harris, who was here on Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to put all the links below in the description. And if you don't know how to get to the description on your phone, there's a little tiny arrow. Okay, right below this video, there's a little arrow and you click on it. And then that opens up all this text that can exist right below, including links that you can click on. And we will add those in when we finish the broadcast. So, mm -hmm. yes, Elsa just gave a lot of hearts, smiles, and thumbs up. And I'm sure she loved uh, my French accent. I studied French in uh, elementary school. And so uh, I hope my accent wasn't too bad. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's roll with this um, with this. Uh, Hot off the presses. No one's seen this except for a private group. I'm really, really excited to be bringing it out to everyone here tonight. And so let's go in here. You're ready for some more power. Let's bring Peter Wolfing up side by side here. This is the man, the myth, the legend. When uh, I tell you, you heard a little bit from Pierre, and now we're going to hear from Peter. <laughs> but Peter Wolfing, uh, this guy, make sure he has uh, sharing uh, capabilities also. He's probably going to share screen things. But Peter Wolfing is the guy, if you ever heard me talk about uh, when I was a number one income earner and a number one recruiter in three companies simultaneously at the same time, all three of those companies were owned by Peter Wolfing. Uh, one of those companies, uh, we personally sponsored uh, 898 people and it blossomed into 1.5 million people um, and just incredible. Peter and I, I said, Peter, you know, you're high tech. And uh, I said, Peter, I'm high touch. So we mixed the two together, high tech and high t t uh, touch, uh, high tech, high touch you get a bigger check. <laughs> and so he agreed. And so anyway, so we took some of his online stuff offline and man, it just went great. And so again, Peter's like a quiet sniper, right? He's kind of like, 
but he's coming low, getting more and more now, more and more revving up here. And so listen, he's a, he's a father. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, the guy runs marathons. He does so many, so much stuff. Matter of fact, he's lost weight, looking younger, doing all kinds of things. And, uh, you know, he's been, uh, trained also, uh, with the greats, John Maxwell, the Ma John Maxwell trainer and so forth and all these different things. But I, I believe you correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, his companies, he developed them to where people make the most money. He figures if he can just get a little bit. And I think he's helped people, uh, was it over a billion dollars? Yeah, over a billion dollars in, in commissions earned, yeah. Wow, over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So so again, my friend, you wanna listen to what Peter Wolfing has to say. I always say this, but he's he's got a heart as big as Texas, although he's out of New York, right? And he knows the facts, he loves to have fun, and uh, he loves to empower people. So. Peter Wolfing, I like to say the brother like no other, the master disaster can't say it no faster. He's too strong to be weak, too sweet to be sour. He can't take credit as God and his wife's power. And so Peter Wolfing, take it away. Woof, woof, woof. Open up and give him a hand, y'all. Let him know you love him. Come on now. Come on, come on. All right, all right. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, everybody. Um, yeah, uh, Dr. Stan's absolutely right. I am very even keel. Um, and I learned that in the, the military when I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, and it's a, it's a skill that you learn, which is called managing chaos. Managing chaos. When things are all helter-skelter, you kind of step back and things go into slow motion. You're able to make better sound decisions. You never make decisions when you're too high or too low. Otherwise, things go terribly wrong in most cases. So as a CEO of my company, 22, almost 23 years now, it's served me well, served my members well. Um, and we've been able to do some great things for so many people around the world and help them to have a better life. So today, what I'm going to do is, as far as the training is I'm going to back it up. Okay, back it up, back it up, back it up. <laughs> and we call peeling the onion. Okay, I'm peeling the onion and going. Okay. Yeah, Shauna, <laughs> this is Blake Sterling. I'm hold returning on, a call. Uh, try to call. Somebody want to mute him? No, out? no, no. This, this is not your turn, Blake. This is Peter's turn. This is Peter's turn. So, <laughs> okay. That's all right. We, Go ahead. We roll. That's okay. That's okay. We roll, roll with it. Um, so, so I wanted to back it up and go to a really basic level. And um, I told Dr. Stan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach in a different way. The way I like to teach is I like to teach through stories and I like to teach through physical environments that I'm in. And I relate that physically to what I wanna teach, the subject line of what I wanna teach. So today is a fairy tale, okay? About King Arthur and a troll and a hag, okay? But the ultimate part of the story is about learning to love yourself because if you go back and back and back you can't accomplish very much at all if you don't love yourself first okay so that's the theme of the story today i'm going to go to my screen now the screen doesn't have very many words on it because i'm going to be speaking just watch the screen and uh, the slides will go along with what i am uh, i'm going to be speaking about okay awesome let me go and get onto my powerpoint All right, Dr. Stan, can you see that? Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna tell you a story that kind of sets the stage for what really is one of the first things you wanna do when you're trying to grow is understanding, okay? And I know you've probably heard different versions of this before, but sometimes you need to hear things many, many times, and each time you hear them, you pick up a new nuance or something because you're a different person, right? You're a different person now than you were yesterday, last week, last year, okay? So the story is about King Arthur and his most trusted knight, Sir Gawain. Now, Arthur is a medieval mythological figure who was ahead of the kingdom of Camelot and the Knights of the Round Table. King Arthur, um, this is Sir Gawain here, okay? So uh, King Arthur and his knight were out in the forest on a hunting trip when a monster troll jumped out and threatened the king's life. The creature had a the king by the neck, sword ready to slice the life out of him, and Gawain shouted, stop, 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 I'll do anything to save my king's life. And the creature said, all right, then you have one year from this day to get the answer to something I've searched my entire life. If you get this answer to that question, then the king's life will be saved. But if not, the king, as well as you, shall lose your life one year from today. Well, of course, Sir Gawain agreed. So for the next year, he traveled around on a mission to try to get the answer to that question, which was, what do women want? 
Come on, somebody. <laughs> now, of course, we laugh at that because it's a question that men have tried to answer for centuries. He searched and searched, asking one person after another. He got very strange answers, some of them funny, like every woman wants two carriages in a garage and a big castle to live in and so on. But he knew that none of the answers he heard were what he was seeking and that he had absolutely had not found the right answer. Finally, it was a day before the year was up and Gawain was desperate. He was beside himself. He had hunted everywhere and asked everyone he knew. Then the idea came to him that he should go back to the dark forest where he met the troll. Maybe there he would meet someone who might have the answer. As he entered the dark forest, he came upon a woman that was the most grotesque creature he'd ever seen. Now I want you to visualize this because it's right out of Hollywood. The woman Gawain met was in old raggedy clothes covered in food stains. Her skin was pockmarked and she had big warts on her chin with hair growing out of it. She had a dirty matted mane of hair on her head as long as it was and it was particularly covered uh, her grotesque looking face on one side. Nevertheless, our hero Gawain went right up to her and with great respect, she said, ma'am, I've been searching the kingdom to find someone who could answer this question. She pulled her hair out of her face so he could see him, so she could see him. And she said, oh, I guess I know what that question is. It's what the women want, isn't it? So he goes, how did you know that? She said, because it's my brother who keeps asking that question. And he's even put a spell out. He'll kill some poor people unless they bring him the answer because he's always looking for it. He's always doing things like that, but he'll never find the answer because I'm the only one in the kingdom who knows it. Pleading Gawain said, ma'am, please tell me, tell me I need the answer to that question. She said, hmm, all right, I'll tell you the answer to that question, but under one condition. He said, anything is yours for the asking. Set your condition, anything you desire. She said, okay. I want you to take me for your bride and you can't marry me privately. You must do it in front of the entire country. The whole kingdom has to be invited. Tomorrow morning, there shall be a wedding. After you marry me, then I'll tell you the answer to your question. So immediately they set out the, the task of having this big wedding the following day. Everyone in the kingdom was invited and told that they should come. The next morning, this ugly hag came out of the castle. Her dirty hair was matted and she had not bothered to clean herself up. Now she was dressed in a new gown, but this did little for the pock marks and the grotesque look on her face and the big chin wart that was had hair growing out of it. She came down the aisle. Gawain de declared his vows and publicly married her as he said he would. They had a big feast afterwards and there she was taking a drumstick off the turkey and gnawing at it with grease dripping down her face onto her clothes. Gawain was just looking incredulously at her, this creature that he had married. Then he turns, she turns to him and says, well, aren't you going to take me to your bedchamber? Come on, somebody. <laughs> he replied, yes, ma'am, I'll keep my vow. You're the woman I've married, and I'll take you to my bedchamber. So they go to a private bedchamber, and he sits down on the bed next to her, and she says, well, aren't you going to give me a kiss or not? He turns to her and summoning everything he has inside himself, he gives her the most gentle, heartfelt kiss and pulls back and looks at her, and he sees that she's been transformed. She's no longer an ugly hag. She's become the most exquisite woman he's ever seen in his entire life. Dumbstruck, he says, my God, what's happened to you? She said, Sir Gawain, you've broken the spell on me that's made me look like such an awful creature that no one would ever love me. But you're giving me a kiss of pure love and it's broken the spell. He said, oh my gosh. She continued, but actually only half the spell has been broken. I have to, have to look like this grotesque creature half of the day, and the other half I get to look like I am now. So Sir Gawain, would you prefer that I look my grotesque self at night when we're alone, or would you prefer that I look my grotesque self during the day when all your friends can see me, and then my beautiful self at night? Which would you prefer? He looked at her and said, no, you know, this is not my choice. This is your choice. Which would you prefer? She goes, oh my gosh, you've completely broken the spell. Now I can be my beautiful self all the time because here's the answer to the question that you've been asking everyone. In the end, what women want is sovereignty. So the spell was completely broken and the king was saved. And the end, that's the end of the story. So he gets the beautiful woman morning, noon, and night. So let me break down the story for a second and how we can use this as entrepreneurs. The ruler of the kingdom is you and I 
and the life that can happen, which we can have, is it's threatened, okay? There's a spell which is called one of separation. Gawain the knight is our human self that becomes separated from the divine self. You and I, all of these different parts are in us. We have the part of us that's the holy self, the spirit. We have the part of a self that's the human self. And the holy self becomes incarnate in body form, and it's the life the kingdom of God has given us dominion over. That's the divine birthright for you and me. We could completely rule that kingdom because we are a child of the king of kings. But we wander into the forest. We wander into the human experience and fall under a spell. We get separated from the divine self, our spirit. We think that in order to break free of that spell, we have to manage the things in the kingdom rather than discover who we really are. Gawain is doing his best to save the king. At times, our ego goes the very best it can do to try to manage our human experience by running around and trying to solve things. But ultimately, life is what it is, and things can get desperate. You get a disease, you get a diagnosis, your business fails temporarily, maybe more than temporarily. You get hit financially. You get a dream that you don't know how to bring about. All your human methods are no longer sufficient. They aren't enough. See, it isn't whether or not Gawain is a good knight. He is, and he does everything within his power to find the answer that's eluding him. Then he decides to go into his inner depths inside himself. He peels the onion, like I said before. He goes to the dark forest again, which is a very scary place. He would rather find his answer in the bright sunlight, but he's willing to go into the forest for discovery, and there he finds something that's very difficult, the ugly hag. She said, I can give you the answer, but you have to marry me. What this means is that there's a part of you and a part of me that's our least loved part. It's a part of us that's more difficult for us to love. Maybe every time you look in a mirror, there may be something you say to yourself that isn't completely kind. Maybe there's something physically about yourself that you don't like. It could be anything. I don't know where it is in your life or what it is in your life that you tend to beat yourself up on and not completely love yourself. But I know it's there for you because you're in a human experience. This is a story of magic transformation. It's the part of Gawain he's willing to reveal and love publicly. Public in the sense that it's no longer a hidden fact that there's a part of us more difficult to love than the other. So Gawain marries that part. He goes into the most intimate parts of his life and in essence, really, he kisses that part. He makes friends with it. He forgives and embraces that grotesque thing. Use this story to remind yourself that this part of me frees me to choose what I really want to create because we are a co-creator with the Almighty. Any way you can, find a way to reframe and rethink what's holding you back. In closing, in the Bible, Matthew 3, verses 13 to 17, at the moment of transformation for Jesus, his cousin John the Baptist was out shouting, repent, repent, repent. Jesus separated, um, I'm sorry, Jesus appeared and asked John to baptize him. Symbolically, he went under the water. He entered into spirit. Symbolically, water is spirit. As he emerged, the windows of heaven opened and he heard, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And it's the same thing for you. You are loved, period. Everything that has ever happened to you, that you've done or didn't do, your entire human journey is like one grain of sand to the entirety of who you really are. And you are loved. Blow yourself a kiss, right? Blow yourself a kiss. Knowing that truth brings love to all the places you think that are unlovable, warts and all. So guys, thank you so much for listening to this story. And I hope that it brings to you a little bit of understanding about that you have to start and you have to love yourself first, okay? Loving yourself first, accepting the warts and all, and then you choose to be able to become better. That 1% better every single day is going to change your life dramatically over time, okay? By doing this, you're gonna be able to accomplish anything that you want in your life, and you team up with other people and do a breakthrough challenge like this to break through whatever's holding you back. So guys, use that story. Think about it from time to time. What are you holding back? What are you criticizing yourself for? 
I suck at sales. I get rejected all the time. This business doesn't work. What do you think you're doing? You can't start a business. All these different things are popping up on your shoulder and whispering in your ear. These little grotesque things that you just got to flick them off and say, listen, be gone. Get out of here because I'm going to make this happen. Okay. Love yourself first, guys. Back to you, Dr. Stan. Man, Peter Wolfie. Oh, my goodness. Come on, y'all. Let's give him some energy. Did you enjoy that? Did you? Come on, unmute the line. I'm Come on, unmute the line. Get this oh, man some. Come on, Peter. Come on, yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come on, man. All right, we're back. <laughs> we're back. We're back. We're back. That was just like, uh, that was great. All right. So uh, we just uh, let a, a number of other people know who will be joining us. But uh, what I want to talk about next is uh, maybe a little bit of a Q&A and an interview with Peter about this whole story and how it's archetypal, right? You've, you've shared this story a number of times, and each time you say it better and better and better. So what, what do you think is really uh, the practical side of that story, and how could people apply this to their life and their business? Over to you, Peter. Well, things we, we learn over our life, you know, we learn and we um, accept as gospel about certain beliefs and stigmas um about money um rich people are bad they must have been bad because they got all this money and then that's what you know of course they're bad people because they're rich you know so you start to think about money differently because of the way you're taught and let's face it these days you know the rich got to pay their fair share and um the they're considered bad it's it's like popular to think of them as bad people and um hey yes there are some some uh, bad ones there, but by and large, I think most of them are very good people. Um, yes, should they pay uh, more in taxes? I think they probably should. They may have loopholes there, but that's not the point. You know, um, if you look at money as a bad thing, then how do you expect money to be welcome in your life and you to be successful? It's not going to happen. It's like you're, you have this aura about you saying it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. It's just not going to come. It's going to pass over your house and go to somebody else that say, okay, come in. Welcome. You're welcome. So um, in effect, these types of things, you have to, like I said in the story, kiss it and make friends with it. Okay. And find out these idiosyncrasies that you have that are holding you back. It could be a relationship. It could be the, the, the classic, I suck at sales. I'm no good at sales. I mean, that's a popular one for most people. And that was, again, taught to you. Could be, you know, maybe when you were younger, you went to go sell Girl Scout cookies and somebody slammed the door in your face. Now you suck at sales. For the rest of your life, you suck at sales. You know, I, I was out walking my dog um, and I was in you know, they had like a little lobby for, um, for where the bank is to go to the ATM. Had my dog there. My dog wouldn't hurt a fly. Okay. My dog loves everybody, everything. It's just the friendliest dog ever. Perfect dog, I love him. And and someone uh, came in and they're like, ah, <laughs> she run against the wall. Keep your dog away! Oh my god, you know. And um, totally, totally frozen because it was a dog. So, you know, I was trying to tell him, listen, the dog's really friendly. No, no, keep away, you know that kind of thing. And so it made me think, why did the person react that way? So. That's what I want you to say. How, why do I react a certain way? Why did that person react a certain way? But do it in your own life. Observational thinking. Okay. That's what we talk about on Monday, observational thinking. So somehow earlier in this person's life, maybe when they were two or three or four or five years old, they're playing up, oh, what's this little fuzzy thing with the wet nose and nipped them. And now they hate dogs and they're afraid of dogs for the rest of their life. Maybe something like that happened to you with sales or relationships, or fill in the blank. So if you unpeel the onion, the first step is always understanding, right? Understanding what's happening, and you have an awareness of, of that, okay, um, that that's happening. Then you can go about solving it 
getting rid of it and replacing it. Now it might take some work, it probably will. But as we said in the story, there's there's this these little trolls inside of our lives that cause us to do certain things that are not really servicing us at all. And some of us have more than others. Okay. And uh, it's up to you as your obligation to your success in life to tackle these trolls. Now the first 12 to 15 years of your life, you just have to accept it as gospel because that's what, that's how, uh, that's how you in, in, um, in life, that's how you're, surviving right that's how you you survive in the pack you accept what's going on and you just absorb you're like spongebob you just absorb but after that point you have consciousness <laughs> you know our, our teenagers kind of get conscious and that's why they rebel right because they get conscious all of a sudden and they have a, a feeling of self that they're, they're exploring their boundaries and different things like that but before that they don't so when they do that's why they rebel and, and, and they go like this all the time and everything right so, but from that point on, you in turn have the obligation to question everything and to choose everything and get rid of stuff that service you at two and three and five and 10 and add other things to it and replace and keep on doing that, re add and replace throughout your whole life. And that's what this story is about. And if you have these things in your life that are, are bad, okay, then you decide what's bad and what's what's not and then you have to at least hey listen you got to embrace it make friends with it and say listen love you but you got to go <laughs> but kiss 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 love you but you got to you got to go <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> sorry adios amigos <laughs> um and and then uh, sorry but your time is time is done and and uh and you keep on doing that in your whole life and it's this process um Vic, from from the book um tools for titans 1% better every single day. 1% better. Yep, that one right there. 1% better every no, I can't I can, not 1% better every day, but 1% better in a skill. Look how thick right? it is. It's it's great. So many people, it's such a great book. I have the audio book of that. I listened to that on on Audible. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And um but I think really if you have the audio book, you really need the book cuz they get into a lot of detail and you have to really see stuff in there. So I think you really need the the book as well after having just the audio book. But um, this this concept of getting one percent better in these different skills is going to take yourself to a whole nother level. But um, going in and finding yourself and and giving yourself a break um, and um, it, it's going to cause you to have a great foundation. So this way you can rise to the stars when you're when you're choosing to do stuff. So um, long winded answer to that question, Vic. I love that. I love that. So uh, Tina says, I know mine is rejection. Yeah. 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 It's um, rejection is like a big spear and rejection is at the end of the spear. <laughs> the tip of the spear is always the most lethal part. Right. And it's like poke, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, it's like, oh, you feel devastated, you know, and, and you feel like you want to melt into the floor when you get rejected. Um, but it's a. Uh, the way you overcome things, and we covered this on Monday, was either spaced repetition over time or a sudden impact or a sudden bam, and you're just done. I'm done. Okay. So I, but mostly, I wrote a most, song called Sudden Impact. Uh, maybe I'll play it for you. Yeah, um, go for it. Uh, uh, not right now. I got a, I got a <laughs> presentation to give, but yeah, yeah. I, will, I will pull that up in a okay. moment. Um, okay. But I did awesome. write a piano song because sudden, sudden impact. What I wanted awesome. to do was to just shock people with the first note, and it was very dissonant, and it was uh -huh. very, it was very different because I like most of my music is based on classical mm -hmm. inspired, um, but this was I wanted it to be atonal. I wanted it to be harsh. I wanted it to be, and it's funny because that one song. I excluded from my most recent build of my new album series. You know, like I have mm -hmm. like five plus hours of streaming piano music on YouTube now. Mm -hmm. And that's, this is one song I took out because it didn't fit. 
it just didn't fit the moment of all the other songs. But I think uh, now that you mentioned Sudden Impact, I figure <laughs> I should actually play that for you guys. Uh -huh. uh, so stick around to the end if you want to hear that. All right. Well, so, so how you overcome, Tina, how you overcome rejection for most people is spaced repetition of over time is you, you have to domesticate the fear of rejection. And you domesticate, how do you domesticate a dog? Right, you do the same thing over time, period over time, and then eventually they become domesticated. So, this this fear of rejection, this pain of rejection, you you do that by doing it over and over and over and over again, as big or as small as you can handle. Okay, and you become numb to it, and eventually, after you become numb to it, you seek it out because you know the more rejection you get, the more success you're going to have. So, if you want massive success. You have to have massive rejection. It's like this pendulum, right? And on one side is rejection, pain, anguish, right? And the other side is success and money and happiness and abundance, right? But in order to have as much abundance over here on one side, you have to swing it really far on this side, right? If you only swing it a little bit, it's only going to go a little bit. If you want massive, you got to do massive rejection, massive um, prospecting, Talk to massive numbers of people because if you do that, it has no choice but to swing an equal and opposite reaction on the other side. It has to. That's physics, right? It's the laws of the universe. <laughs> it yeah. works that way, right? And uh, that was a, that was a, 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 a training I had for, with uh, with Darren Hardy taught me that. It sometimes feels like you know, some people say you were rejected as a kid or your dog bit you, and now yeah. you you know you know forever afraid of dogs. But mm -hmm. in this internet space, it's almost like we're suffering that rejection on a daily, sometimes multiple times per day basis. And what you have to remember is you're not the only one, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you're not the only one. And what a lot of people don't realize is the internet is mostly decided upon by committees who have been doing this stuff for 20, 30 years, and they're establishing these protocols, they're establishing these standards, they're establishing these guidelines, and then they pitch them to companies and they get them to comply with it, and then there's enforcement, okay? And what you're feeling is the enforcement side of things, and you go, well, wait a second, why, did, why, why is it like that? Why? Why did what I used to do not work anymore? Why do landing pages not, why are people not opting into my landing pages? Well, I did a training called it. It's called Before a Click. And we may do some of that on Thursday. But tonight I want to talk to you about affiliate marketing. And uh, I would love, I would welcome your input on this, Peter, if you can, if you can stick around. How are you doing on time tonight? Oh, I'm okay. Okay, so this is about, about 30 minutes or so is mm -hmm. the length of the presentation. And um, please, if you're watching us, hopefully you will be relating to it. And uh, let me see a show of hands of the people who are here. How many of you are in some form of affiliate marketing, network marketing? In other words, you make money by promoting other people's products, okay? Now, I'm a product creator, okay? I started off as, you probably have heard me tell this story a million times, but I'll say it again. I started off going into personal growth and leadership, and then they said, well, you should start a business. And so I got into selling water filters. Mm -hmm. And I found that water filters was a great conversational piece. And I also got the opportunity to mix dating with selling water filters <laughs> back in the early days. And then mm -hmm. I got into Himalayan goji juice, which was like a health product. Mm -hmm. And then I got into this green powder with a, another fellow from New York City, Dr. Simeon Cuffey. Super blue green algae. Me to do, the, do you know him? Super blue green algae. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was one of those things. It, yeah. it came, it came in a, a big, uh, you know, like a coffee cup sized jar like a one month supply. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was my first introduction to the hybrid model. Mm -hmm. 
So he had a, a, a payout that paid 12 levels deep. And he also had what's called the fast start bonus. And see, the fast start bonus was a two tier affiliate. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then it had this depth as well. I don't know if you know this, Peter, but I built his comp plan software. Okay. <laughs> My okay. team built the comp plan software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I when you and I met and I built one of the comp plan softwares for your one of your companies, I already had that under my belt. So I knew how to do it blindfolded because I just gone through that experience. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things we learned from that experience was that. I don't know, he had a lot of lot of affiliates, he had over 10,000 affiliates that were promoting it less than 100 really made a commission, right? Um, but yet he had these very expensive prepaid visa cards that would be shipped out to everyone and they loaded all their commissions onto the, uh, onto the thing and everyone got a membership card. Well, the downside was that there were fees every single month on that card, mm -hmm. which is fine if you're making money, but some people were not making any money at all. They, they weren't. So what, so, uh, I, I advised him that, um, why don't we just go to printing checks and mail everybody a check? Well, we, we did that ultimately. And we found out that, uh, uh, a lot of the people, especially when they got like a $10 check, they framed it and they never cashed it. So it actually made the company more money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Breakage. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Ritchie says yes. I'm not sure what you're what that's in in, in forma, but uh, thank you, Elsa, for your. I'm just catching up on the chat. So anyway, <clears throat> affiliate marketing is very very different. It's kind of like selling the uh, the the two tier um, the two tier uh, of a model where you get a percentage of the sales and then the company does the rest. Okay. That's what we're going to be talking about. Okay. Traditional affiliate marketing pays anywhere from 30, well, 25 to 50%. The more of a startup and more of the risk, like a JV zoo offer is typically around 50% because it's a brand new product. It's just launching. It, no one has any proof, no traction. There's no track record. And so there's a lot of risk and there's has to be also a lot of reward. And so that's why products launch at a 50%. But then when the company becomes established, they typically drop down to about 20% to 25%. And you can make a really good living on, on that. Amazon affiliates program, it pays anywhere from three to 15%. And so depending upon the product, well, even a 5% commission on a, on a big flat screen TV, it's certainly worth you creating a, uh, a page or a website showcasing Amazon products. Um, I make, you know, it's not enough, but it pays for my, uh, for my books and my audio books just by being part of the Amazon affiliates program. So what, what we want to talk about tonight is the difference between traditional affiliate marketing and then what I'm calling snap marketing. Okay. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right, Peter? Mm -hmm. Sure. Of course. There's a product I created. It's called Soci Snap. And Soci Snap actually came about because of my observation of what wasn't working in traditional affiliate marketing. So, um, Let's go into the fifth iteration of the presentation, shall we? Okay, so you should see traditional affiliate marketing. Can you see that, Peter? Oh, you're muted. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, great. I'm going to go quickly through these first few slides and then I, I would love your feedback on it. All right. Basically, it's called a tripwire. And so what happens is people come in like for free. Hey, come join my summit. 
hey, come to this five-day uh, breakthrough challenge, and it's free. And then there's an upsell of $7. And then there's a VIP room for $97. And then there's a higher tier ticket at $1,500. And typically what it looks like is you come in for free, and then they give you a, a another uh, like you like you would check out with your seven dollars. There's a video sales letter, and then you pay your seven dollars. Then it goes to another page that sells you on the ninety-seven dollars, and then you pay your ninety-seven dollars, and then it will go to a third page that will typically say, "Hey, we'd love to give you a free consultation." That usually is an indicator that they're selling something for fifteen hundred, and then if you say no thanks, then they'll downsell you to something else, and then they'll finally give you the thank you page at the end, um, and that's what a traditional tripwire funnel. Have you I mean, have you seen these before, Peter? Oh yeah, of oh. course. <laughs> okay. Every JV Zoo product has that. Right including my own which is not really mine it actually belongs with a partnership with cindy donovan in australia i love cindy but this was the creative right they came in and they buy soci jam right now you can buy soci jam you can go to socijam.com and you can pay 27 bucks for it well then there's an upsell it's going to sell you for 37 bucks and then you're going to pay an extreme value, which is another $27. When you add these up, right, you end up paying more than what we sell SociSnap for. And then we give you all three of these. Then there's this upsell, which is an agency. And then there's this thing, which is a reseller. But the problem with this model is that 80% of customers won't use the product or they get irritated with all the upsells. And the numbers reflect the same thing. The EPC or the earnings per click after next to 5,000 sales of the funnel and more than 2,500 sales on the front end, it's 81 cents on the front end and $1.98 on the funnel. Okay. Soci Snap, in contrast, and I just pulled the numbers today. It has a $99 list price. Most people can find a coupon on the internet and gives them 30%. Or if you're watching this, you can use the coupon code MENTOR and that'll knock the price off by 30% and you pay $69. But you know this, Peter, you've seen uh, our commission. Some people, for some reason, they wanna pay full price. I don't know why, <laughs> but they do. <laughs> And look at that number right there, $2.86 on just the, the, the front end offer, okay? So what does this mean? Let's run the math. Now I have a degree in math. I'm just gonna make it really simple for you. I'm gonna give you the answer, then I'm gonna break it down. 85 cents per click is what you earn, okay? You, the affiliate, earn 85 cents for every single person who clicks through to our sales page. Now, can you make a business out of it? Absolutely you can, right? As long as you're buying clicks for less than 85 cents per click, you'd be making money. It's just math. Does that make sense, Peter? Yeah, you just gotta make sure you spend less than the 85 cents. Right, and that's a current numbers. We can increase that number if you're running something called a funnel with like leads. So let's talk about leads or opt-ins are where you ask for an offer in exchange for an object of value. And people brag that they get a really high opt-in rate. They say they get 30%, 40%. And I just say, you know what, that's baloney because we've run tens of thousands of clicks, almost 100,000 clicks, and we found that if you ask for name and email address, 
Across the board, it's right around 5%, okay? <laughs> and it's around 10% if you ask for email only. It drops down to 1% to 2% if you ask for name, email, and phone number on the same form. Just to prove it to you, this is our own internal funnel system. We've tested it. We audit all the clicks. We audit all the leads. We had 85,740 clicks on one of our funnels. This is with paid traffic from Facebook ads, okay? 9,100 opt-ins, 9,169 opt-ins with a conversion rate of 10.7% asking for email only, okay? Email only. So then you might ask yourself, well, why is the whole world going with your name and your email? Well, because they have found that if you ask for their email address and their name together in one form, you can now personalize your communications and it does produce more sales, but you're gonna get fewer opt-ins. One of the technologies we're working on is you ask for email on the first page and your name and phone number on the second page. And then that converts even better than, than the others. So more on that later, but I didn't wanna to talk too much about your leads, but I want you to understand if you're getting a 10.7% conversion rate, okay? Let's run the math back to the 85 cents thing, okay? Okay, you're paying 85 cents per click to the sales page, okay? That means if you're sending people to an opt-in page first and then you send them to the sales page, you've gotta be buying traffic at eight cents per click in order to break even. Does that make sense? Are you with me still? Yep. yep. Okay. It's very simple numbers. If you're sending people to an opt-in page, but you're never selling anything on the back end, all you're doing is spending your money and you're not receiving anything in return. Okay? So this is kind of like a list building workshop, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, how are we different? What we do in SociSnap is extremely different. We turn the funnel on the side, okay? This is called the value journey canvas. When people buy SociSnap, instead of the upsell, we actually deliver them straight into the members area. It looks kind of like this. Okay, I'm just gonna bring up my uh, a monitor here, bring up a window. I'm gonna go to sociestap.com slash Peter. <laughs> Since Peter's here and he's one of he's our number one top affiliate, the way we've structured our sales page is every affiliate can have their own video on the sales page. So if you purchase the product, or you can register for the product for free, I'm just gonna do that, or you can log in. Okay, I'm gonna log in with my Google account. What we want to do is make it super simple for people. And this is what it looks like. Boom, they're immediately into the members area. There's no complicated process to get people to, to purchase, okay? If they want to purchase the product, they can use the product for free for three tries. And then they're going to get a notice that's saying, hey, I think it'll work with this account. I'm not sure. Let me see if I've used my three tries. If I click the emoji, okay, so it, yeah, if I do this three times, then it would pop up with a notice saying, hey, your trial is over, you need to buy the product. And what ends up happening here is we can give people customer satisfaction from an initial purchase or from the uh, free trial. And so the whole key to this is we, we do these upsells after giving the value, 
rather than bothering people with upsell after upsell after upsell after upsell. Does that make sense, Peter? Yep. And that's one of the reasons why we're so excited about affiliate marketing. Okay. Mm -hmm. We just launched something called the Insider Club. It's 99 bucks a month. We still have people paying that. But most people, if they have a coupon from their sponsor, they get 30% off. So it's $69 a month, but they can get it zero down and free for 30 days. And what do they receive for that? They get the relevance series. They get my Facebook relevance, YouTube relevance, email relevance, and search relevance, which is all these trainings and how to be relevant in everything. So all you have to do is go to sosysnap.com, go back to the person who sent you this video, and log into your members area. And there's a link that says make money by promoting SosiSnap. Now I recommend that you you do a you do that. And then send people to your link, do a Facebook live, do Facebook ads, do Facebook groups, do YouTube or direct email. <clears throat> However you do it is up to you. But our commitment is we run people through an Ascension series. If they purchase the product, we deliver on the bonus. We thank people after they purchase them. We invite them to webinars and we bring them into your primary business. And see, it's a two-way partnership. By putting SociSnap on the front end, you now have the ability to bring people into your primary business and we over-deliver on the value. Because there's lots of sample trainings, you get four videos in each of my sample trainings absolutely free with your membership. The best practice is to write a review, create a video, and let us know that you've created that video. And we are now featuring affiliate videos on our homepage, just like I, did, I showed you with Peter. We have now 6,800 pages that review SociSnap. We have more than 16 coupon brokers that are offering our coupon codes. And look, some of them are very brand new. SW coupons just announced deals for February 2021. They're paying attention to us and they're giving the amount of average savings. Okay. And if you guys need a website, use Builderall. It's free. You can sign up for free for Builderall. And whenever you're ready to launch your website on your own.com, you pay a nominal fee and they even give you access to that for a dollar. And then you can join the funnel club. Need a domain name? My primary business is we sell domain names. My company is EarthGrid. So you can buy domains at domain.earthgrid. And uh, in 2021, you can get the entire Builderall package for only $1. And then you can upgrade to the funnel club. Once your stuff is ready, you want to basically focus on search engine visibility. You want to use my software search triggers to title your videos on YouTube and in Google and promote things on Facebook and LinkedIn. So there's a couple of links I'm going to share with you just to close out the presentation. I have a VIP page for our VIPs. It's earthgrid.com slash VIP. FBRelevance.com is my Facebook training. And tuberelevance.com is my YouTube training. And then if you have a website, you can go to sleuthreport.com and list your website in our search engine. And we will give you complimentary tips on how to improve the title, description, and keywords of your business. It's very simple. Just put in your website address, run the system. It'll fetch the title from your website, your description, and you can replace your keywords and you can be listed inside of our search engines. So thank you. That's what I wanted to share with you tonight. A little preview of what I'm gonna be teaching on Thursday is called the future of social media. And the topics will be, what do the top 4% of online business owners do that the others don't do? What are the three essential ingredients of social media follow-up? How can you leverage the new social media rules of the game to your advantage? 
and tools to automate your audience engagement on fan pages, Instagram posts, and collecting leads automatically, and how to turn your warm subscribers into hot repeat buyers. That's a preview of what I'm going to be talking about on Thursday. Let's come back on cameras, Peter, and let's uh, let's have some Q and A. We have a lot of our members are excited about what we were sharing, but um, that's just a quick PowerPoint I threw together. <laughs> <laughs> just whipped it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what what was your biggest takeaway from that? I mean, you, you're our number one affiliate. Mm -hmm. You were our number one affiliate in Sosi Jam when we launched it, mm -hmm. and you're now our number one affiliate in uh, Sosi Snap. Mm -hmm. And the Snap form of marketing, I was wanting to explain that to Stan. Mm -hmm. See what he's doing. We've proven that he would be better off instead of selling something for seven dollars and then later ninety seven dollars. He'd be better off discounting it to sixty seven dollars and over delivering on the value and wait a week. That's what I wanted to sell to uh, mm -hmm. uh, Stan when I had a meeting with him today. Because what we've run the numbers on this funnel model, the tripwire model, and you know what? It's more profitable and better for consumers if they don't do that. And we've now proven that with lots and lots of case studies, and we're, we would love to uh, um, clarify that. So let me say instead, instead of selling people on free $7, okay, sell them on the idea of try what I got and then discount something that's $99, but over delivering on the $99 as we do because we have so much training in there, discount it by 30%, use social proof by having those coupons be public through coupon brokers. So you end up promoting at $67 and you will make more money doing that than selling things at zero seven and then wanting people to upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, could you restate what I just said? Because I'm not sure people understood that model or what I'm trying to convey here. Cause I'm, cause people still think zero seven 97. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Well you had, you said before that you have many people that just go in and buy the 97, you know, don't even use the code. Um, whether they do that intentionally, probably un unintentionally, um, where they just bypass the code and they go right into paying 97 because of the value. They want to pay the value. But um, and I, I think w when you run the numbers net net for someone to offer the 67 versus the uh, the 0797, you're going to make more money um, overall. overall. Yes. Yeah. And customers will also feel like they're getting mm -hmm. value. It's it's a fair mm -hmm. exchange. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If they came in early, you discount something because they're coming in early when things are still baking. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, there was there was a pizza place. I can't quite remember the name of it, but you can get a big, gigantic pizza. And they put all the ingredients on and they give it to you cold. All you do is stick it in your oven and bake it. Right. Yeah, the Giorno. <laughs> yeah. It's not frozen, it? but it's made fresh. It's like, it's yeah. like a, it's like a, it's like a chain. I'm trying to remember that um, since the, the, the pandemic, they've gone out of, uh, at least locally, I, I, I haven't seen them around anymore, but picture this. If you go to a restaurant, for a large pizza that would fill a family of, you know, your size family, Peter, you pay like $25, $30 in New York City, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. For a big one, $20, $25, $30. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what these guys do is they discount it by 30%, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the same ingredients, but you just go home and you bake it in your own oven. And so instead of spending... $25, $30, you're going to spend uh, $17, $18, $19. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same ingredients, 
All you do is stick it in 425, stick it in your oven, boom, it's ready to go. And uh, they made a pretty good business out of it. And, and so that's kind of like the model that I'm that I'm wanting to convey to you is when you offer a discount, you have to think that that discount is in exchange for something. Don't just offer discounts because it's free or you want people to buy. And that's the hardest thing for people to understand because uh, these laws, especially like the law of fair exchange, mm -hmm. these laws are universal, okay? Like I asked you the price of a pizza, okay? Mm -hmm. What if I wanted to uh, charge 70 grand for my pizza? Would you buy it? Uh, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> well, no, Mr. Beast, who's going to be on Friday uh, on this channel, we're going to try to stream that. He's doing an event with my friend, Daryl. He wrote this book. Okay, the guy, that guy has billions of views on YouTube. Okay. He's going to be streaming an event, an interview with Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast bought a $70,000 pizza for him and his friends. Gold. It's gold uh, called edible gold. $70,000 pizza. Okay. Well, fair exchange would say if you actually have gold on the pizza, then you could charge $70,000. But without the gold, no one's going to buy your pizza if you're charging 70 grand. Yeah. So what I see a lot of marketers do right now <laughs> is they're going to say, hey, this thing's worth $2,000, but all you have to do is pay $7. Well, that discount, it's not real. Do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah, Peter? yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. They have to perceive the value is there. Right. Right. Because what they're actually, I, I would rather say, you know what? Why don't you charge $97 and discount it by 30% because I came in early, expire that at a certain time, and then run quarterly specials or seasonal specials if you want to. Or uh, maybe let, the best thing to do is because you purchased one of my other products, let, let's say you bought, <laughs> well, I do this all the time. I say, hey, buy a domain name for 10 bucks, buy an email tool for $12 a year. You get emails, you know, your own email address at your own domain name. As soon as you go, do that, send me the receipt. I'll send you 30% off, right? Mm -hmm. Boom. Now you've created value, okay? So what I see people doing on the internet drives me crazy is instead of creating value, they're creating debt. Do you understand that subtle distinction, Peter? Yeah, yeah. If it really is worth $2,000 and you sell it for seven, you've now created almost $2,000 in debt. Obligation that you want people to they feel if you actually do have that kind of value, people are going to feel obligated to give you that money back in the future. Okay. In the future. And typically people who do this, they are doing so at a tenfold markup. It, mm -hmm. So in other words, by not paying 200 now, we're going to collect 2000 from you in the future. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. we've, talked, we've taught on this model before, Peter, mm -hmm. and I know it's a little controversial because a lot of people still are doing this model because they believe that it works. Mm -hmm. They believe that YouTube is going to send you traffic. I mean, people believe. I still ask. I still talk to people every single day, and they still believe that when you upload a video – that YouTube is going to find people to watch your video, right? When mm -hmm. the exact opposite is true. When you upload your video, YouTube wants to see how many eyeballs you can get on your video in the first 24 hours with their help. And once you've proven that, they may send more people to your video based on your track record. That's how it actually works. So if you have no track record, in other words, 
if people like they make a bet, some of them will make a bet on you. They'll say, you know what? Like uh, the stream we did last week, uh, Peter. And this is why thumbnails are so important, which is what I taught on last week. They will, when the stream goes live, they put it out to like 100 people on their phones. Okay, you remember that? I showed you it was like 127 people. Yeah. As soon as we went live, 127 people got a bing on their phone. Mm -hmm. And then they look, okay, out of those 127 people that got a bing on their phone, how many of them actually hit the play button and started watching that? And if it's under a certain percentage, they just won't show it to the rest of them. That's just how it works, mm -hmm. right? So you could have 5,000 subscribers. It doesn't matter. If at that very moment that you went live, people did not watch that, that means you didn't do your pre-marketing. And it's tough because pre-marketing, it just kind of sucks, honestly. It's something you want to hire out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, uh, even even you and I, both of us, both of us don't like that. We don't. Like I know. It. Yeah, because we've all been involved in large companies, and we know that that's typically. Um, I don't mean to be sex sexist, but yesterday was International Women's Day, and I was in a talk today with this guy. I really met him. Yeah, Papa Murphy's. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Let me, uh, Tina says, Moe's, <laughs> and Bill Ritchie says, Papa Murphy's. Okay, so you guys are tracking with me. Okay, it's good, that's good. It's interactive, it's, it's, it's quid pro quo. Okay, here we go. Uh, where was I, Peter? <laughs> Talking about the pizza, right? Uh, yeah, before... As soon as I talk about pizza, everything I was talking about before just goes yeah. out. Mm -hmm. But it was, I was making a point that the pizza was leading up to. When it, oh, yes, notifications. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they send out the notification and people do not take action, that hurts your future action. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. If they, if you have no notifications and you have no, no nothing, then it's not going to hurt you. That's why beginners oftentimes have luck when mm -hmm. it comes to starting a brand new YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You can oftentimes start a brand new YouTube channel and have more growth than people like us that have had YouTube channels for many, many years. Because uh, because you figure YouTube, they're in business to protect themselves, Right. So and protect themselves from from um, people that have groups that don't respond, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Or or th what they're really concerned about is not so much protecting themselves. They're more interested in keeping viewers on YouTube instead of going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this is really, really a big key when it comes to YouTube. Just like Facebook, <laughs> same thing. They yeah. don't want you to click and go somewhere else. <clears throat> the most important link is the next video. The most important link is the next video. So we did a little test at one of your companies, Easy One Up, and it, it skyrocketed your channel so far um i could show a, a slide uh, if you want of how it was like flatline and all of a sudden it went up like that mm -hmm. but what we did was we switched the the video that was on your home page from one video to three videos so as soon as they finish watching one video it goes into a 20 minute video and then it goes into another video, right? A replay of our live events. And because it, it's, it's what's called a playlist. And so the playlist is so powerful. It's, it's probably the least talked about 
secret on YouTube. But to me, it's the most important thing that we all need to learn is playlists because I could have a playlist with some of my videos on my channel. I could put some of videos on Peter's channel. I could go into Tina's channel, who's here tonight, and send some people to some watch some of her videos. And guess what? As soon as people start a playlist, every single video in that playlist will be played without any prompting. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Without any prompting. Whereas if you just run a video that's not in a playlist, it's gonna have an end screen where people have to take an action and watch the next video, or it's gonna randomly show another video from YouTube or another video from your channel if you know how to set that up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these strategies are what I teach inside of Tube Relevance, and that's this is like a little mini Tube Relevance uh, course because I want you guys to all be making playlists, you know? And when you're first getting started, don't worry about it being even your content. Just make a playlist of other people's content and put it on your channel. I started doing that and I saw a rise in my channel activity because I wasn't being selfish anymore, right? I started having playlists of people that I like, like Russell Brand, people like Daryl Eves. I'm building a friendship with him. I'm building a relationship with him by giving first. And I think it's important, especially with really very, very um, influencers, social influencers. How do you influence a social influencer? You give first because everyone else is wanting from them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. People that people that have already made it, those are the people that you want to serve, right? You yeah. want to serve and you want to give. And um, those uh, those are definitely the people that um, that's how you, you create, um, get them to notice you. Let me just put it that way. Awesome, awesome. So, do you have any questions, or um, I could I could play a, a play a some more of your content. Well, it's uh, I want to talk about builder all. We actually wanted to do a little bit of a builder all training, especially for easy one up, because um, it's so important that people do this quickly. Very briefly, uh, just so you know that we've now fully integrated Builderall into the Easy One Up platform inside of the uh, recommended products area. And so you've got to get your ID in there so that when people join your business, that they will be signing up under you. Uh, Peter, could you emphasize that a little bit? And then I'm going to go and just share that because I think a lot of people don't know that and they don't know that they don't know that. And so. Right. When we go live in just under 10 days with the CEO of Builderall, we have our big Vertex live event and it's going to be huge. We want to make sure all of you are ready for that. And that's what I that's that was my objective for today. Yeah, uh, because they have, they have a, a really nice affiliate program. So you want to put your information in there in the back office of Easy One Up. So this way, when your people go to that, you're going to get commission. Okay. Um, and they they pay some great commission first tier second tier so thirty percent first tier, and thirty thirty percent second tier I believe it is Vic right yeah okay and uh, it it adds up it adds up over time and and uh, your first goal is to is to defray your whatever cost for the builder all product is or uh, or something in, in that area the second goal is to just start to defray other marketing budget you have and the third goal is to make a profit so you can add it into your business so this uh this product builder all is a fantastic funnel building system so or website or chat or it has so many different uh i think 40 or so different uh bots to it and so you you want to get in there and start playing around with it and using it because you want to become proficient Right? You just don't want to sit there and have, okay, everything has to be done for me. You know, 
I mean, that might be good when you're first getting started, but you want to be a little kind of proactive and start to learn how to do it yourself. It's not, and it's not rocket science to do that. There's so many videos on there and Vic and I talk about it all the time. So he has the easy webs, easy uh, one up website there. He's going to log in and show you where that is. Yeah. Yeah. So what I want to show you first was the playlist. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see how you can hit the play button and watch the video. Okay. We see right here, this little tiny little thing right here, it says mm -hmm. playlist and you can tap on that and you can see here's the zoom with intentional mentoring and the vertex live introduction. Just by adding these extra two videos, we've now increased the watch time across your entire channel. You see that, Peter? Yep. Yeah. It's so, so powerful. And so this is the Vertex Live event. This is the replay on YouTube. And what we're now going to be switching to is going to be the new one that's going to be airing on March 20th. And you can actually register for that by simply clicking on this button that's going to be here. Instead of it saying replay, it's going to be uh, sign up. And you can watch it. It's going to be streamed on YouTube, just like this is being streamed right now. Let me make this a little taller. Perfect. Okay. Now, I've already logged into the back office um, because there's some private information there. But let me show you where this lives. You want to go into the marketing hub, okay, and then click down to where it says recommended programs, okay? And then you want to click on this link right here, okay? This is your sponsor's link. So when you click that link, it's going to bring up a page. <clears throat> You can be the next next internet rock star. Start now for just $1, okay? And you can go ahead and access it right here. You click that button, and you can create your checkout right then and there. Just put your name, your email, and your password. Accept the terms, the privacy policy. Accept the terms of use. Etc. 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 Okay, and what this shows you is you get all of these tools. You get an app builder, a magazine builder, an e-commerce builder, the mailing boss autoresponder, which we're going to be doing a live stream tomorrow with the founder who created this autoresponder. He's going to be with us tomorrow at the same time as today. Uh, the mock-up studio, social auto post, messenger chatbot, video wrapper, all of these things you get for a dollar. But let me lend you in on a secret. You can just put your name, your email, and, your, and create your password. And if you don't pay the dollar, it actually creates the free account, and you can still get your number and stick it in there. Then what you can do is you can try it out using their free plan, and then uh, upgrade to one of the paid plans uh, later on, but you will miss out on this on the sixty-eight dollar discount. Basically, all they're doing is they're dropping the price to one dollar uh, to give you a whole month to test things out. Does that make sense, Peter? Yeah, great. <clears throat> okay. Yep. So then, once you do that, you're gonna. It's gonna look kind of like this. You're gonna sign in. And you'll see all your apps are right in there. These are all the apps that I've loaded in that I use. And then you go over to account and you'll see there's your number. It's called an ID. And all you do is copy and paste that ID over into this box. And as you can see, I already pasted that and then click the update button, okay? So, Peter, could you restate that? Because repetition is the muddle of mother of skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you want to make sure that while well, you pay the dollar, I, I would highly suggest you do that. 
and just go in your back office under profile, copy the ID number and place it in your back office for easy one up. Then you hit update and any of the personally sponsored people that you have that go and uh, click on the link just above that, you're going to get credit for commission. And okay, so so do they automatically get a converting Builderall funnel with that Builderall sign up from the back office? And the answer is yes. And we're building a funnel specifically for Easy One Up inside of Builderall right now with the top people and the top producers and the Builderall company helping us make this happen. So when we launch this, and maybe a week or so after the Vertex Live event, not only will you get the high converting funnel <clears throat> that Builderall gives you, you're also gonna be getting our funnel that Peter and I have been working, how many months have we been working on this thing already? <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> I think at least since October, uh, and that funnel is going to be also available to you because you're part of our tribe. So that's another reason why we want to get this thing rolling out and we want to educate all of you in the best practices. So, it, okay, Tina asks a question. If we use someone's video on our playlist, we don't get pinged on YouTube for copyright. Great question. Let me ask that. Let me answer that in a moment. Um, uh, Peter, anything you want to say more about this this uh, downline builder? Well, it's just it's pretty apparent the downline builder, the uh, the other products that are in there. There's Sosi Snap there. There's Amplified Profits and a few other ones. You want us to make sure that you put your ID for those programs that you in turn are members of, so this way you get credit. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And the same thing goes with SociSnap. If you go to my products, actually you go to Marketing Hub and you go to resources, it's different than recommended programs. Like what you wanna do with SociSnap is you wanna go down here and the next one underneath Stripe is this one right here. And you click on that and then you put in your ID right in here and then you click update. So like my ID is 26426. So I would put that number in there. Well, first you get your number and then you put it in there. Does that make sense? Yep. And you want to go through all these other ones, Venmo, Zelle Pay, TransferWise, Cash App. And then this is probably the most important one. You know, how many people in easy one up have actually put in their own custom homepage. <laughs> Not many, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Once you build your website in Builderall, put your website in here, share your story, talk about what you're doing, right? People will love it. And then this also shows up inside of your back office. So when you go to my products, excuse me, I keep going to my products because I love products. We'll go to marketing hub, recommended programs, put in all your downline builders, and then when you go to resources, uh, this is where you get uh, Soci Snap. You can also access the builder all tools from here. And then there's additional tools and postcards and things like that inside of here. These are all your marketing resources. Then I highly recommend you start, okay, with elevation, okay? Go through your inner greatness, leadership authority, mind power mastery, Personal Transformation Mastery, Side Hustle Secrets. Great title, Peter. That's mm -hmm. a great title, right? Yep, yep. Watch this video. It's 22 minutes long. That's too long. Most people can only handle five minutes on YouTube. Take that video, summarize it in your own words, upload it to your channel. You don't have to invent any new content, right? So uh, let me go and answer the question that was on the screen here. Tina Kearns asks, if we use someone's video on our playlist, we won't get ping on YouTube for copyright. Okay. 
when you link to someone else's video on playlist, uh, Peter, I'm sorry, I lost you there. So let me uh, let me go switch my monitor here to another. Okay. Tina asks, if we use someone's video on our playlist, we won't get pinged on YouTube for copyright. All right, so let me show you that. When I go to YouTube and I, the first thing you want to do is you want to click over here and you click on the, the icon in the upper right hand corner and then you go to your channel. Okay. Uh, you can also go to YouTube Studio. I'm just going to go to YouTube Studio. But then you go over here to where it says Playlists. And you can see all of these playlists. Okay? So I have a playlist called YouTube Basics. So when I click on that, it now brings up my playlist of YouTube Basics which are all the guys that I follow, like Think Media, Daryl Eves, Roberto Blake, Nick Nimmin. Um, actually, that's not a YouTube Basics video. <laughs> I should remove that. Uh, D. Nimmin, Quentic, Ryan Walsh. And this is the guy I watched last night. Whenever I see something that I think is worthy of beginning YouTubers, I put that in my playlist, okay? The copyright is not mine, it's theirs. I'm sending my people to their channel, okay? In a perfect world, they would end up on their channel. Like, let's say, for example, I sent someone to Think Media. Think Media sent someone to Daryl, and then Daryl sent them back to Victor. That triangular relationship tells YouTube that we're kind of all collaborating and working together. This is what YouTubers do. We send traffic to each other's channels because we understand that community is stronger than individuality. Does that make sense? So Tina, when you're sending and you're making playlists that include people like Les Brown, people like Tony Robbins, it's going to their channel, okay? But it's your playlist. So while they're in your playlist on your channel, they may go over to one of Tony's videos or one of Les's videos. The next video could be your video commenting about it. And that's a great way of editorializing your content. So let's say you were really inspired by a talk that one of your favorite celebrities gave what I would recommend you do is make a playlist around that celebrity and then interject your own videos in between on that playlist. And what that tells YouTube is it's going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's eventually going to start building momentum. Okay. Your goal is to keep people in your playlist, keep people watching your playlist, because if they don't, What's going to end up happening is they're going to go out into general YouTube and they're just going to watch someone else's thing. Okay. Did I answer your question? Okay. So William asks, do they automatically get a converting build a builder all funnel? Yeah. Peter's back. Hey, Peter, welcome Hi. back. <laughs> William asks, do they get a, a converting builder all funnel with the builder all sign up from the back office? So I believe I answer that is yes, there is a already existing funnel with already existing emails, which I can show you um, that the company sends out. And in addition, they also get added to your own autoresponder. So let me show you how that looks. I have to go into, um, 
I think it's niche niche niche, niche funnels. Okay, Tina says, okay, makes sense. Uh, Peter, can, while I'm pulling this up, can you answer that question for William? This me today about promoting using one up by itself without the downline builder. Yeah, why not? Why they should, that's the way it's built. It's built for them to be able to do that. They just use the built-in autoresponders that are in the system already that, that are included on your dashboard. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Ah, here it is. Okay, I, I need to hide a few things on my screen, so let me do that. All right, Peter, you see my, my screen there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you're inside of your builder all, you're gonna have a section here called leads, okay? All you do is you click on this button that says options, and click save email list. And so all new leads will automatically be added to this list. So I could, I, right now they go into the automation machine which sends them a drip campaign that I built, but I could send them to any of my other lists. And these are all my other lists. So, or I could create a, a no list, but I would also create a new list and I could just create a new list right then and there. And I would give it a new list name. I would say a uh, new builder all signups. Okay. And the display name would be builder all. Uh, you signed up for a trial of builder all. Super simple. And I just go in and I click next. And then I would add in the name and last name and I click save changes. And now I have new builder all signups. Now when I go back to here and I click refresh, I can go in here and I find the new builder all signups list is right there. And so now whenever I get a new lead, it's gonna go into this list instead of the other list, right? And then once you have that new lead, you can follow up with them in your own personal way in addition to the ones that the company uses. Mm -hmm. So if I go to the branding kit, this is where all of the uh, resource board lives. And they have um, ads, sample ads, sample posts, sample social media stuff. If you scroll all the way over here, you'll see where it says emails. And so you see these emails right here, free website plan, builder plan, and premium plan, and inactive accounts. But basically these are all the emails that Builderall sends out on your behalf, okay? So if I click on this link right here, you can see this is the letter that Builderall sends out on your behalf. And so what you wanna be doing is tailoring your messages to complement these messages that your prospects are already receiving and weaving that together. And see, that's what makes you a great email marketer is when you can weave the company message together with your own personal story. And that's really to kind of bring things back home. 
I would say that's how uh, King Arthur would be if he was a, an affiliate marketer working with Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and William just says the same thing. All right, awesome, William. Great. Michael says, amazing. I love Michael. Michael's a professional video maker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I immediately saw his camera presence. I, I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for coming on. All right, so uh, I think that's our show, unless anyone has another question. Uh, we've been here for two hours. I like to have three-hour live streams, you know, because – I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Peter's looking Don't at me. Don't scare me like that. Don't scare me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too old for that stuff. <laughs> All right. So you have any uh, uh, closing comments? Uh, um, we covered a lot tonight. I'll, I'll be happy to stick around a little bit longer and, and play some replays for y'all. Well, yeah, guys, we covered a lot as usual. And um, we we taught you a lot of things to think about, and the the back office of Easy One Up, and also uh, what Victor was talking about before with his slideshow presentation. So take this stuff here, kind of uh, grab onto one concept that you like, take some action on it. So this way you can start seeing results, and we'll see you on the next broadcast. So on behalf of Victor, this is Peter Wolfing. Thanks everybody for coming on, and uh, I guess that's a wrap, Vic. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. All right. You're going to stay on? I'm going to stay on for a bit. I'll let you get okay. back to your family. Okay. Thanks for coming out. We'll be at, we're back on Thursday with the continuation of the, the social media project that was kind of like the uh, the slide deck. Yep. I love these okay. decks because, you know, we did that last year, and it's time to just update it with current, current information. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay, Vic. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, so I'm gonna delve into Facebook here a little bit. And uh, while I do that, I was going to talk about, um, there was a post I wanted to find inside of a group. It might be inside of a. Oh yeah. Okay. So look at this group. It's uh 54,000 members in the Builderall Facebook group. That's crazy. <laughs> amount of a post and what I'm trying to find was a post that uh, was about tomorrow's email marketing training that I, I would recommend you all go to. We're going to be streaming it here. So you could just come back um, to our channel. Let me just tell you how to find our channel. If you go to youtube.com slash tube relevance, that's my channel. It's all about cultivating inspiration. And so love to have you subscribe there. And if you go to um, youtube.com slash intentional mentoring, that's the channel that I'm working on with Peter. And uh, you make sure you wanna subscribe to that and make sure that you click the bell with the all on both of these channels because that way as soon as we go live, you don't have to think about it. Uh, YouTube will send it right to your phone and you can just keep watching. <clears throat> but there was a post that I wanted to bring up and let me see if I can find the screenshot of it. To me, it's one of the most perfect posts that's ever been created with SociSnap. Here it is, found it. All right, here we go. Look at that.
Oh, I have to stop sharing my, I have to share a different screen. Give me a moment here to share the other screen here. Okay, so if you can see that, let me try to zoom in a little bit. Okay. This was inside of the group and this post was created in Facebook and it uses Soci Snap. Do you want to understand email marketing? Free webinar that's bold and italic from the creator of Mailing Boss, Julio Rocha. And then there's three bullets using emojis and then learn, 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 right? Date, register here. This is a must attend event in my opinion. And then the, the fist, uh, fist bump emoji. And Chris and I spent about uh, three hours, I showed him how to use Silsi Snap. And then he went ahead and created this post for the whole company. So it's just an honor, uh, as you can see. Fantastic post, Chris. What tool did you use to make it look so good? That was kind of a baited question, but he said, Victor, I use your amazing Sosi Snap tool naturally. I love it. One of the challenges we have when we create products is uh, we're kind of shy about pitching our own products. And so we really love it when other people um, would just share their use of the product and how they love it. And so that just warms my heart. And I really appreciate all of you who are part of the Sosi Snap family and the Sosi Snap community to help us uh, make this product even better. So if anyone has any questions, I'll take them. Otherwise, uh, we'll call it an evening and we'll be back uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific with this uh, webinar on email marketing. I'm gonna see if I can stream it on the same place. And then Thursday, Peter and I will be back talking about social media and the, the weaving uh, that we talked about with affiliate marketing and social media. So uh, going once on a question, going twice on a question. All right, three times, there's no question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a, uh, a video and uh, see if this will inspire you a little bit. All of you can be experts in Soci Snap in 90 seconds. So I'm going to show you what you can do in 90 seconds with Soci Snap. This is an email that Peter sent me as a draft. You can live the laptop lifestyle. We click the highlight button. What this does is it looks for all of the spam words. You can remove this. So instead of the word problem, we replace it with challenge. Then we run the spam tool again. Instead of saying you can, we say anyone can. And then the word marketing. Like it or not, the word marketing has become a swear word. So if you use it in any social media, including but not limited to most email programs, which have now become more like social media, because they all have bots that read what you do. So get rid of the word how to do it. We just got rid of it. And so with the tool Soci Snap, you can now scan all of your content. If you don't already have Soci Snap, please go to socisnap.com, pick it up. It's under $100. You probably have a coupon code. You can Google it if you don't have a coupon code. Pick it up. I'm putting all of my best training for you for free just for you having Soci Snap. Okay. And I keep adding more and more to it. All the beginner training is free. That's kind of our going forward from here. Buy Soci Snap, 
get all your beginner training for free forever. 